alone, I'm going to destroy it. You know, sometimes part of us hears that story and we think, you know, God really should have destroyed those ungrateful, sinful Israelites. Tempting us to forget that at times we as children of God have done the same thing. You know, those times when we, like children, forget God has redeemed us created us and sanctified us. You know those days when we were all kind of cranky, God, why are you doing this to me? Instead of thanking God that he gave you life, thanking God he made you his child through baptism, saying thank you God for connecting me to Jesus who suffered and died to give me eternal life. You know, sometimes older Christians they uh, forget God forgave the sins of their youth when they complain about those young people. Just don't get it, those young people. And sometimes younger Christians forget, you know, God used those older Christians to, to bless them with the church and, and then they complain about them. Yeah, they did this, this and that. And young and old at times, you get to think, you know, I'm not going to pray for those who don't know Jesus, those who have strayed from Jesus. They deserve to go to hell. Let God punish them. I'm going to pray that the Lord destroy them all. And when we do that, we, we act like those people who threaten that golf course owner with death and destroying his course. You know, they totally forgot that it was by, it's by God's grace they live in a land where we still have freedom of speech. And even though many might consider his offer tacky, most would agree, you don't deserve to die for it. You don't deserve to have your property destroyed for that. You know, those, why did they threaten them? They were so full of their own righteousness. They didn't consider that by saying this, they were using their words like the terrorists use jetliners on 9-11. They terrorized this man. You know, don't be like them. You love your neighbor as yourself because of God's amazing grace. Remember how Jesus compared God's desire, as we heard in the reading, to save the lost sinner to a shepherd seeking his lost sheep or to a woman seeking her one lost coin. And then Jesus says after each time, there is, rejoicing in the, there is rejoicing in heaven that takes place when one sinner repents. Remember God inspired the terrorist Paul, Paul is a terrorist, to write, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I'm worst. But for that very reason I was shown mercy so that in me the worst of sinners Christ Jesus might display his unlimited patience as an example for those who would believe on him and receive eternal life. Remember Moses, who sought the favor, the undeserved love, the grace of the Lord God and prayed, oh Lord, why should your anger burn against your people and whom you brought out of Egypt with great power and mighty hand? Lord, you rescued these people and you know they're sinners. You know, if you destroy them, the Egyptians would mock your name, saying it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to wipe them off the face of the earth. Don't let those Egyptians mock you, Lord. Turn your face from anger. Relent. Have mercy. Have compassion. Don't bring disaster on your people. Remember the promise you gave to your servants Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to whom you swore by your own self. You gave your word, Lord. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and I will give you your descendant, give your descendants all the land I promised them. And it will be their inheritance forever. And then the Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. This prayer of Moses makes him to what we call makes him into what we call a type of Christ. A type of Christ is a figure in the Old Testament that previews or points ahead to what Jesus the Savior did. 
and what he does for sinners today. When Moses prayed for Israel, he interceded. He acted as a go-between, this, as the, the same way Jesus intercedes for you and me. As 1 John 2 once declares, My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, he speaks to the Lord Father in our behalf, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. You know, when we commit our sins, Jesus speaks to the Father in our behalf. He says you know, something like this. Father, don't destroy them. Be patient with them. Have mercy with them for the sake of, for my sake and for the sake of your name and promise. Remember, I suffered and died to pay for their sins. And you promised that whoever believed in me would be saved. So give them some more time, Lord. Forgive them. Move them to repent. And the Father listens to them. The Father hears and in his amazing grace, he forgives our sins. And he gives us more time. However, don't trifle with God's grace. Don't play with it and, and think that because you're saved by grace, you can just go sin it all you want. Remember, Moses came down from that mountain and saw the people running wild. And that Aaron had let him get out of control, and so it become a laughing stock to their enemy. And he stood at the entrance of the camp and he said, Whoever is for the Lord, come to me. Moses called them to repent. And all the Levites rallied to him. And then he said to them, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Let each man strap a sword to his side. And go back and forth through the camp, from one end to another, each killing his brother, his friend, and neighbor. All those who refuse to repent, who refuse to stop worshiping this idol. And the Levites did as Moses commanded. And that day about 3,000 people died. Isn't that interesting? That's about the number they say died on 9-11. 3,000. Remember, when some told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate mixed with their sacrifices, this was an act of terrorism to Pilate committed. He murdered them. And Jesus replied, Do you think those Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered that way? I tell you no. But unless you repent, you too will perish. And then he told this parable. A man had a big tree planted in his vineyard. And he went to look for fruit on it. But it didn't find him. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, um, for three years now, I've been coming back Coming to look at this tree and this big tree and have found any fruit. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year and I'll dig around it and I'll fertilize it. And if it bears fruit next year, fine. Not cut it down. You know, the Lord doesn't wish to cut down to destroy sinners. He wants all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. And the Lord, he could say nothing about our sins and call us to repent. But in his amazing grace, the Lord warns us, every sinner, don't bring destruction upon yourself by forgetting his amazing grace. By taking it for granted, saying, oh, we we'll always have that grace. Therefore, remember God the Father who created, who provides for you, who richly and daily provides clothing, shoes, meat, drink, house, home, land, cattle, all that you need for your bodily life. Remember your Savior, Jesus Christ, who purchased and won you a lost and condemned creature, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood and his innocent suffering death. Remember the Holy Spirit who called you by the gospel, who brought you to faith in Jesus, and daily forgives all sins to you and all believers in Christ, and will on the last day raise up you and, and raise up all the dead and give you and all believers in Christ 
eternal life. Never forget God's amazing grace. Amen.